Now that everyone's properly chuffed. Now that everyone's primed. Primed for anger. Uh, we can talk about the... Uh... The, the anger I got to feel, mm. and I, I'm going to just just glaze right over this because I'm still trying to figure out where to put these in-progress compartmentalized feelings, but uh, Game of Thrones is shit now. Is it because of the Starbucks cup? <laughs> it's, it's not. Is it because but... <laughs> Daenerys likes Starbucks? It's not because of the Starbucks and cup. And she doesn't like Tim Hortons. But it is emblematic. It is emblematic of the entire thing. The fact that they had a shot where the fucking Queen of Dragons, the Mother of Dragons, the Breaker of Chains herself, was sitting at a table, and a cup of Starbucks was right in front of her, and nobody caught it, shows you where D&D so is at. So I watched that clip, just the two-second clip, because, you know, spoiler. That's whatever. where D&D is at. And I'm just like, whoo, like, it's so, like... Oh my god, stop bitching. If Whatever, I was man. watching that, I would have gone, whoa, wait, what? I, I stop. Did, I didn't notice it until until okay. uh, Chatter actually it's told me about it later. The fucking screen. And then it's I, like... I, yeah, I didn't notice. I went back to go, like, no, that's mm -hmm. not to criticize you because it is a two second cut. No, because the focus of the shot is on two other characters. Yeah, it's on uh, what, what's his face and whatever. But Yeah. But still, like, Jesus. It, it was, it's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, D&D refers to uh, D.B. Weiss and. Um, uh, Dave, what's his name? The, the 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 fucking the guys behind the show, the showrunners, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. So, uh, Game of Thrones. Now after now after we like we had uh, the great disappointment, <laughs> as uh, Adventists would say, and now we've had like the like you have that phase of like okay, but wait, there might be a and then no, the follow up, exceptionally stupid writing. I want to point and out, it just falls apart. It all falls down, and it's the exact opposite of Endgame. I want to point out that I watched a good TV show back in the day. I happened to not catch it when it was airing, didn't, whatever. But then I heard people ranting and raving about how great it was, except for this one bit. And I watched Battlestar Galactica, and that show was amazing. And then within three episodes of the end, I almost regret watching it. Wow. It, it ends... If anybody, like, well, you can check your the chat right now for people. If anybody's watched Battlestar Galactica, the new one, that ends the worst of anything I have ever seen. Worst botch. Yes. You're giving it the crown. I'm giving it the worst botch. Wow. It is astonishing. And it's very clearly because they didn't plan. Wow. Right? So since then, I then doubled down on my, huh, this seems really hot, but I didn't watch it super hard in the beginning i'm gonna wait till it's over and people have been hassling me about game of thrones for years yep. and years yep. and yep. years yep. and years yep and i come in today finish line the middle of the last season finish line and out your mouth go game of thrones sucks now <laughs> game of thrones is shit <laughs> and i go fuck all of you <laughs> fuck all of you <laughs> you have hassled me for years because now I'm going to wait a couple more weeks and I get to have the talk with people of it ended really badly, didn't it? But is it still worth it when it's not week to week? When it's not a conversation piece? When it's not, ooh, what's going to mm. happen next? When it's just roll on through I mean, you to had, a story that just ends like shit. It, you would have had a good time every Sunday if you were keeping up during the journey. The disappointment is so immeasurable it's, in this type of it's situation. It's the anti-end game. It's the, it's, it's the complete opposite. Nothing is worse than a it's disappointment the, <laughs> years in the making. This is, this is the start work. Oh my it is, god. <laughs> It is the complete opposite of Ed Game. <laughs> the start work? This is the start work. Game of Thrones is the start work. This is the start work. All right. <laughs> it couldn't go any worse, my dude. Like, laughably, and the best part, the best fucking part is for years, right? There's always been an aspect where you could go in and start... um. You could start going into the theories and like crafting your explanations for hey, why. How come, where's the? Hey, is that gonna go? There? And what? And the books would give you a little piece yeah, of lore. Yeah, you, you take you take this thing. He's like, this didn't happen, but 
I know that this exists, so maybe they were and informed even by when the... you weren't sure why or what went down. There's always the plausible deniability that yeah. it's not what you thought it was because it's not what it seems. Yeah, because the story's only half done, and there's plenty of room right. for explanation or exploration or whatever. So this season, and I don't know when it started actually, but I noticed with this season, they started immediately the moment the credits roll. After the credits, it immediately goes to. Uh, inside the making of Game of Thrones. Mm. And you go right to the moment. So what it feels like what they wanted to do is kind of go like, when we get our red wedding type moments, then you go right towards like, oh my God, what were you thinking? How'd this go down? Whatever. Yeah. Slash, if you have any viewers that are not really, um, what do you want to call it? Critical viewers? Sure. People that are not really thinking about what's happening. They're just responding to prompts and action. Passive um, audience. Passive audience. They can then get someone who tells them why things happened, yeah. and they might pick up on things that go, oh, their cool, their brains were shut detail. off for otherwise, right? AKA the people who love the third episode. So, for example, um, like uh, in I'm gonna dance. Don't worry, everybody. But in Endgame, near the very end, uh, there are characters that say things that I did not realize were callbacks to five movies earlier mm -hmm. because I was not active enough. Mm -hmm. At the time, right? so like, it's, yeah. So what ends up happening, right, Willie? You're such an asshole. <laughs> you're going for it today. I have thoughts. Today's your day in my little baby shoes, Willie. I was woken up by by construction hammering. Yeah, a little bit cranky, Willie. It feels good to tell them they're stupid. Just keep going. So, <laughs> what we get feels so immediately good. post credits now. Yeah, is the hard cut interview. To oh, no. the fucking directors oh, no. sitting there telling you exactly why they made the stupid decisions they made. That is. And completely explaining the worst justification you could ever imagine for them. Such as, we were hoping that the viewer would forget what they saw ten minutes prior. Shut up. Literally. That's not believable. We made this decision because we thought it would shock you and be surprising. Doesn't matter what else was taken into account. We just wanted to make something. They give you the reasons. They literally tell you the that's, shallow, dumb reasons. That's no so good. So you don't even get to have plausible deniability. You don't get to do the thing you did a couple seasons ago where you're like, no, wait, maybe uh, next week might, oh, there might be something else. Because they tell you straight I up. I think that we live in a world that I feel fairly confident in saying that being able to talk to the people behind works of art, creative endeavors, TV shows, paintings, music, whatever, is a massive mistake. Being able to talk to George R. R. Martin or J.K. Rowling or the showrunner of your favorite show or whom the fuck ever... Accessibility was a mistake? like a massive fucking mistake. It's because it allows because... them to tell you why the thing that you thought was cool sucks straight from the horse's mouth. Yes, it also enabled the growth of this entire industry. Well, that's different. We don't make art. We make garbage. Fair enough, but accessibility <laughs> is a big part of why any of all Fair this enough. exists. However, however, I, there is a spoiling aspect to it that... A, uh, not spoiling, a ruining aspect that, yes, when you get to hear straight seconds after your brain is trying to process why they made their decisions. They just straight up tell you the reasons why, and they're the worst reasons ever, and they're as bad as you think they are. And then that hurts you extra hard because you go, wait, someone who's making this dumb of a decision, how did you accidentally do something so cool so many seasons ago? And then you start to go, oh no, was it all grim? So Was it the moment that they stopped having the actual books as source material that's when we started getting like I, you know what i mean but you're like no because there's moments where you're like that was weird but i bet it's gonna pay off and you start questioning the whole you start questioning the whole thing because you're like someone making this dumb of a mistake doesn't make sense that you're that talented to go back and also do this cool thing so now you're like is it just that you're a master at adaptation as opposed to creating it originally i don't know but there you have a point i just have something I don't no, want to forget. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm formulating, yeah. and I am listening to you, trust because, me. Because, like, when I'm talking dumb explanations, I gave you two of those. Yeah. Uh, my, one of my big favorites at this point is, um, again, in the same vein, a character, 
uh, who has a character who has uh, encountered a huge weakness to their ability. Sure. Right? Simply forgot oh. that the enemy had found a counter. Oh, I see. Is what the directors themselves say. Oh, they forgot. And so... It wasn't that important. When they re-engage with the enemy... And make the obvious mistake. And then end up losing... Yeah. It's because the character simply forgot... Yeah. ...that the enemy had come up with... Uh, a solution. A solution wow, to their problem. that's great. This is super awesome. And you would... I would never in a million years assume that. I would just assume... I was like, oh, they were... I, you know what I mean? I, I went any... I went a billion other places with it when I watched it. And I never would have thought that. And then I heard the director say themselves... Yeah. Uh, forgot. Yeah. Forgot about the kryptonite. For, yeah. S Superman forgot the kryptonite forgot. hurts him. And he then... Just forgot. And that's it. And then the story moves forward. So... This is wild. Because... I didn't want... I'm going to use Battlestar Galactica as an example here because this is my experience with this thing. And it's also much older, so I feel Bully safer. is so wrong, wow. So I feel... Go ahead, bro. Welcome to my fucking... I know! Welcome to my world, man! It sucks out here! Go watch the fucking post-interview, asshole. What? Go uh, listen to them uh, say it. Oh, uh, it's turning up! Uh, Go listen! Oh, uh, it's... Rise! Fucking <laughs> Willie Rise! Rise! Um... Yeah. All right. So, Battlestar Galactica. I believe that the interviews with the uh, cast, with the director, with the writers, the showrunners, etc., all happened after the series ended. Right? Not middle. Okay. Like now. Okay. Like you know, like most things, you talk to them at one DVD release or some shit. Right. And so, one of the biggest story elements of uh, Battlestar Galactica is that the Cylons can look like people and feel like people and are indistinguishable from a human being. I still want to go back and watch this. Someone recently talked to me about some dumb shit that happens. I'm talking about that dumb shit right Okay, now. okay. Don't worry. Don't okay. worry. I got you. I got all of you at home. I'm good at this now. So, the question is... the, the I think it's like episode one or two. There are 12 people in this story that are actually robots. And they're actually double agents. Right? And have fun, and the characters know this as well. So have fun trying to fucking guess who the fuck is an evil robot for five seasons, right? Oh, wow. Okay. They get to the final season, and there's been some upheavals. There's been beloved characters and evil villains that turned out to be whatever, right? We're down seven. There's five to go, and the final season is all about figuring out who the final five are. And in fact, they constantly use the phrase, the final five, right? Is this the core of what people like about the show? No. Okay, There's because a lot. I've still been told to watch it. The core of what it. people like about the show is that it's a submarine drama in space. Okay, you're not taking away from me the reason no. to watch it right now. No. Okay. But, the final five, right? And then they, re they reveal who the final five are in a big spectacle. Spectacle. Nice. That. Nice. It's French came out for a second there. That was weird. Um, and you're like, huh? That doesn't make any sense. And then after the series wraps, they go, hey, what happened with the final five? How come uh, it was these characters that made no sense? And they go, well, we got to the last season and realized we hadn't decided who the final five were. <laughs> In fact, we had never decided who any of them were up until the point, the episodes in which they were revealed to be the character. So we just, we realized there were only so many characters left. So we just picked five of them. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah so we just picked him. Yeah, that's that lost shit. Yeah. That's that lost shit that I can't stand, where you basically build, fuck you, mouse. You build a whole thing on creating cliffhangers with yeah. no... Actual, no actual and yeah you you, cre you put you're creating puzzle pieces with no receptor yeah. for where the puzzle piece goes and the problem is is that if i go back and watch that show there are going to be large elements of that show that are fucking nonsense as a result of later decisions you know how revolver ocelot and metal gear solid always makes sense at the time but if you go to the end of the story get every motivation he actually has and go back in time Realize that nothing he does ever made sense ever at any point that he ever did it at the time. It's like that. 
Um, so I, I, none of this has anything to do with uh, the character that suddenly disappears from the show. Because I heard That's about that. And I... Very bad and somewhat intermingled with what I'm talking about. Okay. Because all I heard about that was someone went to go fucking join a cult. And that meant no longer being on the show. Despite being, like, the most important character on the show. It's like if Goku left. That's wacky. That's wacky. (laughs) It's so not that fucking Smallville cult, man. And and it was the same one too. And, and the way that they leave and then come back, they come back for like an episode or two, and they're like around. But it's like that's nuts. And it's 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 the most poorly explained thing in the whole show to the point where magic gets introduced. Oh my god, fucking magic. Fucking Chloe from Smallville ruined BSG. <laughs> and, um... Oh, it's, dear. It's, it's this thing where, like, Battlestar Galactica is one of my favorite shows. I am honestly... Still. T- yeah, it's amazing. Okay. I'm torn. Like, I honestly feel like, hey, watch it. And at season four, at the end of season four, make a decision, which is easier to live with. The worst ending to a TV show ever. Or not knowing how it turns out. And by that time, the thing we're talking about, the character leaving, that has already happened. So you get the taste of it. And you, you, I would say to you, imagine if that feeling was the whole thing. So remember how we discussed not wanting to see the things we like stick around long enough to suck? Yeah. And we talked about Vagabond and a couple other things. Talk about JoJo parts and all sorts of shit. Uh, Talk about Berserk, for fuck's sake. The The... The saving grace of the of the of the the cutoff, mm. right? The saving grace of like the fucking um, the mercy killing, yeah, right, is that something like uh, Firefly can happen, yeah, where they come back way later, yeah, and just Bang shoot out a, a fucking movie. movie, yeah, and then wrap that shit up, right? That's that's the best can't you can hope do for. It. BSG ends conclusively. Just come back with a serenity and do it. And... You know? <clears throat> Yikes. That's such a bummer because the strength of BSG is a bunch of old dudes arguing in a boardroom about how they're running out of food. Like, that. that's, that's the core of that show. <sighs> Game of Thrones, like is fucking falling under the weight of its own popularity yeah. and inability to tell a story anymore. So, it's, like... Is it is it suffering from the fact that it's the biggest TV show in the world? It's, it's suffering from the fact that, like, yes, and as a result of that, like, the things that people loved about the show were how it shat all over... Uh, cliched expectations sure. of a fantasy world and how things would play out, right? Yeah, so Ned. So, early... <laughs> and so, this... this, Yeah, here we go, all right? Yeah. The show in the last season has become the show where someone saves Ned at the last second. Right? The thing where you see Ned go down on the block For- and everybody is getting ready and they're like, well, there's no way they're gonna... Oh, fuck! That for moment the, in Baylor from season one. For the audience at home that can't see me because you're listening to the audio podcast, I've let my neck and head go limp as I listlessly move my head miserably. That moment where everyone went, holy fuck, did, I can't believe it. They just did that. This is the version of the show where someone swings in and saves him and the story goes on. Because it's so important. How many times do we have to do Full Metal Alchemist? And and we gotta and we gotta have most importantly is he's gotta get back to his girl because the romance angle you know is what, the most dude? important thing. You know what, Are dude? you in a couple? You're protected by plot armor. You know what, dude? I'm just waiting for fucking Game of Thrones Brotherhood. All right. Well, <laughs> you're gonna fucking get it because they've already confirmed the prequel series is being made. I said Brotherhood. I meant the retelling of the real story. Okay. Well, um, with th- the same actor. That's happening. Um, not to mention that these two chuckle fucks, mm-hmm. who I used to fucking admire, D&D, are going on to get their own Star Wars trilogy. 
What? Yeah, the Game of Thrones guys are getting a Star Wars. Oh, great. Yeah. That was announced a while the ago. The series that has its own exact problems, problems to come problem over. That are incredibly similar to what you're describing to me right now. Here we go. Wow. Strap in. That's great. This news was back when they were still good, so They're you would hot. you would uh you were like, oh, interesting. At Let's this, see where this goes. At this point, I just want the Russo brothers to direct literally every popular thing. I mean, I wanted I wanted Whedon too, but then Ultron, unfortunately, you know. Whedon's got some weaknesses with his directing style. But he's very good at conversation. Yeah, but he's weak at everything else. I don't I, I don't find so, because I really do like... Um, also, that's writing too. I mean. Yeah, yeah, I really do like, uh, you know... Firefly Serenity. I, 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 I thought Dollhouse was fine. Yeah. I thought Dollhouse was okay. I'm one of the few that even bothered. Uh, Cabin in the Woods was fun. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, ultimately when I think, I'm like, yeah, man, Joss Whedon's good. You know, so, but it's just no one's perfect. But, um... Yeah, definitely not. But yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, it really... Oh! Oh, man, it's just... And it's not just, like... It's the fact that all of these mistakes are happening, but the clock the, the clock is ticking, and, and you never stop n looking at the timer of like how much time is left in every episode. So you feel the desperation, and the mistakes are cascading into each other. You know what is the opposite of this? And I know I know pe for people who have listened to the podcast for a long time, this is going to be the third time I repeat it near verbatim. But, Wooly, you never watched that third season of Twin Peaks. I never watched any Twin Peaks. Yeah, but I'm talking specifically that third one, because it is wildly different. Yep. That has the opposite problem that you're describing. Because, whereas in a big-budget, fancy, popular thing, somebody comes and saves Ned, in fucking Twin Peaks, season three, Ned, like, kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then floats off to become a butterfly. Fantastic. Right? Because Lynch has infinite control over it. And you get to the last batch of episodes, where you, and you're looking at the clock as you watch it, going, there isn't enough time to fix this. It's so weird. Yep. It's yep. so weird, yep. and nothing's happening. Yep. And there are long long scenes I remember you bringing this up. in which nothing is happening and you're looking at the clock and you're like there are five minutes left to end this series forever and you're not you're sitting in a car not characters are sitting in a car not talking for minutes there's a happy medium <laughs> to be struck here there's a real happy medium to be struck here mm-hmm and both of them are bummers, but at least Lynch's thing, I can go, well, he got one over on me. He fucked with me the way, like, Lynch is like, if Anno was having fun doing what he's doing. <laughs> Game of Thrones is a 73-hour movie. Yeah. And at the 70-hour mark, <laughs> it shits the bed. <laughs> <sighs> 70 hours in it shits the bed and then at the 71 hour it fucking loses the plot and you've got two more to go can they save it and just look back at those two as the really bad ones here's how here's how here, here's like here, the, the the hopes of, oh god, this sucks, but I'm sticking in, I want to know what's going on. It's not abandoned ship, because I, I need to know. You're not going to spend this I amount need of time a decade. and, not, and you, not? You need to know, but but the, 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 the when you watch, the moment it cut to the inside, the making of, yeah. and you heard those explanations, the fire in your in your heart dies. Yes. And the uh, your eyes go from like the flickering sh reflective ones to the dead flat colored ones. Yeah, the one where the the green spot in Epo's eye goes out. It goes away. <laughs> That's what happens, and you kind of just stop caring. Yeah. And the thing where you'd be like, "Oh, coming next week on game," and you're like, "Oh, turn it off, turn it off. We don't want to know." Yeah. Who the fuck cares? Oh man. So now you're you're picking apart those previews. That's rough. Because you don't give a shit anymore. And you're looking frame by frame because you're like, how dumb is it going to get? How dumb is it going to get? You know, 
what's great. Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, it was good. Remember when Breaking Bad had one episode to go, and you're like, oh man, I hope they stick it, and then it's like the greatest episode of TV ever. That's pretty great. You know what else is great? Star Trek The Next Generation. Where the last episode of TNG is the best episode of TNG. I don't think I don't think I don't think Breaking Bad uh I don't think Breaking Bad had its I don't think its ending was its strong point, but it stuck that fucking landing. It really that's a really strong ending. Um the there's these it's the, there's those moments where like I like I don't know I kind of like I'm trying to think back and I'm like I like the weird transitional shit where like the the arc changes like him up in a cabin. Yeah, I like that. I fucking like that I a really lot. Like that. I that I that's apparently, the shit. Apparently Dexter tries to do something incredibly similar yeah. and it's a disaster. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard about that. <laughs> I have a, I have a friend that's like hard on the Dexter train and she 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 just goes off on how fucking Apparently Dexter's another one that just ends like incredibly badly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Caught a lot of And people were into that. that for years and years mm-hmm, and years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nothing's going to top Lost. But I know I the thing with Lost those I've never though I haven't watched it. Hell no, I haven't. I at it. know that it would piss me off. Oh yeah, and I've heard super cool things about it yeah. in terms of like shit I would love. I heard about shit guys got a steering wheel and he's fucking he's piloting an, an island. island. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Smoke monsters, bears, the other half of the plane. What? Anyway. <laughs> um, the the no, but there's really there's things I like when someone describes, for example. Um, like let's at some point in the future, well after things have established, we go back and we revisit moments from by putting the camera in a different place and seeing how that changes your perspective on things. Sure, right? Following someone else's narrative through the same events. Sure, love that. Rich, rich writing, full of like character building juice. It's a good idea. Hell yeah. Yeah. But I would fucking lose my mind. At early J.J. Abrams bullshit, not knowing where they wanted to go with it, I would uh, I, I can't handle that. I would hate I would hate it the whole way through. So I'm I don't think I'm ever gonna sit and do it. Anyway, um, this is where we're at now. You know, um, I'm, uh, but yeah, I I I think you should like enjoy watch the first seventy hours of Game of Thrones. I don't do that, and then spite watch the last four or three. Uh, we'll see. That shit hurts. You, you've seen all the Sopranos, right? Nah, never bothered. Never touched it? Not really interested. Uh, not my thing. It's it's better than you think. It's not... It's, it's just not my thing. It's, it's not, not my just aesthetic. Like, I, don't, I don't care for that. Like, I, your, your image is probably just like Jersey Trash Mafia. Am I wrong? No, <laughs> but there is more to it. Sure, I'm, I'm certain. Fair enough. All but right. I just... Nothing about it is appealing to me. Okay. Okay. You like your 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 mafia I'm more, I'm in, much, in 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 the in the Joe Pesci. I, kind of I'm sense. much more like I'll use a, a a wildly different example, but I'm much more likely to just start watching Initial D, despite my like non interest in like drift car racing, than I am Sopranos because I'm just I'm just not interested in that fucking mafia internal life shit. Like, I don't care for any of those movies, either. I like fucking Joe Pesci, which is why you were right to say that. Joe Pesci's the shit. But I don't really care for, like, Goodfellas or fucking Casino. I just care for Joe Pesci being insane in those movies. Sopranos is fucking... Is up, cause <laughs> I bring it up what? because it's 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 up there with Breaking Bad as like... Sure, I, I'll believe that. TV's best. You, you know? know what? I'll use an example that you can empathize with. Just like I don't care about the entire movie in Training Day, but I like seeing Denzel Washington do his crazy shit in that movie. But mm-hmm. everything else that's happening in Training Day, who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? Oh, the Russians are going to get me for the money. Who, who fucking cares? Have Denzel monologue some crazy shit and then betray you. Whatever. By the way, if you want to find yourself a really enjoyable YouTube hole, yeah, uh, look up uh, a but look at people on their cell phone cameras, okay. trying to create audition tapes by having themselves read out Alonzo's final monologue 
in their living room. It is so strong. <laughs> it is so strong. They're standing around in their fucking kitchens. That's awful. With the jacket on going, Jake! Jake! That's like the, that's like the new... What? Oh, I see how it is. Jake! That's like the new era I see of, how it is. Uh, of like talking into the mirror like uh, you got a problem with me. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So back in the day, it would be like, you talking to me. Yeah. You talking to me. Yeah, you talking to me. You talk, it would be, yeah, yeah, it would be 100%. It would be taxi, right? Taxi yeah. driver. And they'd fucking just straight up. Now it's a bunch of shitty fucking dudes on their cell phone propped oh, up in the bathroom trying to do the goddamn trading day monologue. You know, ah, uh, it, it's, it's fine to find that hole. If you will, and just dive down it. There's some fucking amazing ones, man. Now, to be fair, I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna try and put a bow in this. But to be fair, endings are hard. They are. Um, endings are very difficult. I was just I, I, I was last thing I was gonna say is you can like you can hand out awards for weakest delivery of King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> Softest spoken, weakest possible deliveries, but endings are hard. Yes, I agree. They're, they're difficult. They take in every medium. time. Yeah, they take planning. Planning is the important one. Competence and uh, a real somebody's having a bad day. Outside. Yeah, a wow. real bird's eye view. Yeah, of everything that has happened up to the point yeah. that you've reached. Right. Here's the other bit. Uh, you need to mark a fucking X on the map of where you're going. Yeah. In advance, that's not the one that we get where, because, oh god, okay. There's, there's, there, there's theming in the, like, early George R.R. Martin sense in the show, where, like, shit actually builds on itself. And then there's that, like, the fucking last season where they go back and they grab two random lines of dialogue and use them as justification for why we're just gonna fucking flip awesome. it all up. Great. And um, endings, endings are challenging, but, like, you have to have a coherent plan. And here's the other thing you should probably do, and I really like this, not to fucking keep sucking the endgame dick. Yeah. Right? But it really is, like... As someone pointed out that it's like people talk about like oh man where were you when like Star Wars came out and shit like in their era kind of thing like I was in my dad's fucking balls exactly right and it was a big deal with that it was like yeah. a big cinematic event the Endgame being the first of its kind like this yeah. is gonna be a pretty huge deal yeah that's and, fair right it's gonna be for our time it's gonna be a major thing and a reference point that's going weird forward. to think about actually. it is but for a long while we didn't even think about it but the first Avengers was kind of that reference yeah. point so this kind of just replaces that in a way yeah second highest grossing, grossing movie of all time besides Titanic. And it's on its way to beating it out. Yeah. Right? So, um... Uh, but, uh, da, 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 not that money has anything to do with quality, but... Um... What the fuck was my point? Yes! Got it! So, apparently, mm. parts of what helped in, like, the script coming together there was, despite the crazy, like, lockdown and security with, with like, um people not knowing what the ending was going to be sure. and whatnot, they straight up had fucking janitors and lighting dudes and sound boom guys on the set going, hey, uh, can I make a quick suggestion? I, when, you know this part when the Ancient One is describing the, 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 shit, the yeah. thing? Why don't you, like, visually show it? Because it seems a little bit confusing to just hear her talking about it. Why don't we literally show the the thing and have a visual of the split? Movie making is a collaborative process. In and fact, most art is a collaborative process. The, the, the Russos opened up the entire set to suggestions, to, to opened up the room to suggestions on multiple things and took ideas that people were, you know, and it's like, and obviously too many kicks spoils, the, spoils the, the, the broth, right? But these are not cooks. It's so someone who's a normal audience member working on the thing, just going like this. Hey, this doesn't. This shit looks weak. What's up here, right? Yeah. Um, there's a a big. Okay, here's what here, here's what I'll talk around this. But remember, remember how they get the the soul stone? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, apparently that was gonna go the opposite way. All right. And they had someone on the set. That straight up, like, saw the way that was going to work out and went, 
That way's stupid. Don't rob this character of that moment. Yeah. Don't rob them. Okay. They deserve it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And to think otherwise is being shitty. Yeah. Right? And well, it and they also kind of also makes the movie better by removing yeah. What? What? <laughs> um, no, but it was like it's like despite the reasons you put on on you put on paper and go there's why we should go with this what yeah. method and then they're gonna go with that. It's, it's like someone on the set just kind of went no don't don't do that you know and they went oh fuck you're right and they and they and they turned and they switched it up and it it was way better it works yeah. out way better that way you know uh, and a couple things they kind of just were they had other eyes they had fresh eyeballs. To kind of help out. It's funny that you mentioned the collaborative process there because, like, there's a long-standing, not super confirmed idea that, like, move to the next topic. I'm not done yet. No, we're not done. Fuck not off. done yet, jerk nah, off. This is evergreen <laughs> shit uh, of the Mass Effect trilogy, in which they were written collaboratively. Uh, like Drew Carpishan wrote the the stories and the plots, but they'd have roundtables between all the leads, right, and be like, "Hey, how do you feel about this?" Yes. Blah blah blah. And apparently, uh, Casey Hudson and the new guy for uh, three just kind of disappeared for a couple days, and then showed up and were like, "This is the ending of our series," and it was not basically up to debate. Uh, and they junked what is known as the Dark Energy storyline for a new one about AI, and we all know how that went. It didn't go great. Uh, don't so closed room. Yeah, don't. Hey, here's some tips for your ending from somebody who's never made anything creative in his life. Go for it. Don't don't change horses midstream. You don't check out a, what fucking movie? Oh, uh, Wag the Dog was it? Have you seen Wag the Dog? I have not seen Wag the Dog. No. Wag the Dog's a really good movie. It's about politics. Um, and it, it just reminds me they have these these commercials and they're trying to find a way to keep uh, a president in power. Yeah. For a re-election, re and they just get this old lady and all the they just start and all these old people to just record these political commercials going. You don't change horses midstream. Yeah, okay. No matter how bad it gets. Yeah. It just reminds me of that. Well, if you're if the theming and the your plot is building towards a type of resolution, everybody likes a surprise. But kneecapping the work you did earlier doesn't do you any favors. Mm -hmm. Also, us alongside that, it helps if you have a general plan. Maybe not of any specific ending, like you know, an end game where they pretty much knew how that was going to end clearly a while back. But like, let's take something like Full Metal Alchemist, right? Mm -hmm. I very much strongly believe, based off of my own nothing, that the author went. I want this character to be here in this point of their life. I want this problem to be fixed. I want this character to be gone, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. And then wrote towards that goal yeah. in the final arc. Yep. Not. I disagree with the idea of like writing or creating something and like let's just see where it goes. Like that's a good way to get something that fizzles the fuck out. And we play games, man. Games fizzle the fuck out. It is an absurd rarity for a game to have a good ending. They often don't. Especially because most people don't even reach the end of games, so they put all the really cool shit at the beginning. Props to God of War. Props to God of War. Yeah. Props to a lot, a lot of games that have strong endings. Yeah. Props to Witcher 3, actually. Witcher 3 has, like, an astonishingly strong ending. And that game's infinity long, and, like, half of people don't even get anywhere near it. Like even and, and like even like sitcoms that last multiple seasons forever have this weird moment where they have to figure out how do we wrap this shit up, yeah. and it's kind of always awkward. Mm -hmm. It's never not awkward. How do we wrap this shit up? Oops. Yeah. I, um. I feel like you know, like whether you're talking fucking oh Seinfeld, Friends, or or uh, uh, Parks and Rec, it always gets a little bit tonally aw awkward. You know. <laughs> um. So uh, I was gonna say that uh, one, one that last thing came to mind, and it's that uh, something I never realized. Right? There's a there's a video that came out uh, by uh, this dude on YouTube. His name is Mahler, and he does Mahler does some fucking review shit. Yes, that dude is crazy. I have never seen any of them up until I saw him talking about season eight, episode three of Game of Thrones. That dude is nuts. Thirty seven minutes ripping apart every terrible decision <laughs> right that dude does like 
tens of hour long breakdowns. I had no idea. I had no, I had only so the first. He is thing, a crazy person. I saw this video of of this of this sh like shattering of it, and um, what ended up happening was all the things that I had took grievances with the airing of grievances. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, was addressed right in like him breaking it all down, and it's a very you know it's a very um um Yahtzee style like angry rant kind of thing. But what also started to collapse was <laughs> before we get there. Yeah. Do you know? Okay. You know, H bomber guy did that, that two hour long review of dark souls Two. No. Okay. H bomber guy. You're familiar with him um, because of the, the, the charity the trans stream. Charity, but right. He's a, he's a big YouTuber. He did a two hour long rebuttal to Matthew Matosis's one hour long dark souls two critique. Right. Right. And in H bomber guys, dark souls two critique, he uh, fucks a bunch of shit up and gets a ton of shit wrong. Okay. Mahler put out a 10 hour rebuttal of H bomber guys, two hour long rebuttal <laughs> of Matthew Matosis's one hour critique. Okay. This is the guy you were talking okay, about. Okay. Okay. This dude will belabor a point to death. Okay. The deepest dive. Yes. Inception. Every sentence was picked apart. Blah, yeah, like, to the deepest level, the deepest, darkest, fucking to the, to the old man cross in reference bed. chart shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Hard Nolan, triple down. Um, I skimmed it for thirty minutes and I couldn't. Well, I couldn't. that explains like why this review went the way it did, um, because boy, is it ruthless and granular. And, would you say? And so what ends up happening is there's a process, and it's it's really interesting. But when something, when you're watching something you're enjoying, yeah, there's all these things that happen regularly that bother you slash are silly slash don't make sense in the moment. Yeah. But you forgive it in the moment. Ah, don't worry about because it. Because overall, it's for the it's it's whatever, right? It's to get to the bigger point of of that scene. Of that arc, of that chapter, of that fight, of that whatever. Who shot nice guy Eddie? I don't know. That shit was dramatic. I couldn't tell. Not even like that. More like, um, why would that army act that way? That yeah, doesn't sure. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. Why would you do this instead of that? Right. Um, in some cases, when it's like Prometheus, and it's like, why would you run in that direction? <laughs> It's a humongous problem because it's literally the life and death of major characters, right? But smaller versions I of this... I forgot about that. That's the dumbest shit it's ever. It's the dumbest shit That's ever. That's the worst ever. It's the dumbest shit oh, ever. Man, it's it's the, the dumbest shit ever. I remember sitting in the trailer It never got like, dumber. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. Maximum Jesus. dumb. Holy like, 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 shit. You can't top it. It's the dumbest shit ever. Never That woman's forget. a doctor in fiction. Straight lines. Tangents. Straight lines. Perpendicular lines. Um, so, so... Oh, my God. What happens is you forgive a lot of it. Yeah. And, uh, when characters, like, do things in movies where a monster's in the dark... Yeah. But, but they're trying to find their buddy... Yeah. And they go, hey, 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 are you here? Right? Or shining the flashlight around. There's, a, like, a fucking ancient... I think it's Chappelle or Chris... It's Chris Rock, I think, bit... Where he, where he describes <clears throat> white people going down to their basement. Yeah. Like, look, hearing a strange noise and going, Doug, is that you? Like, anyone expects Doug to go, yeah, it's me. I'm in your basement. I'm playing a prank on you. Exactly. Right? <laughs> um, or shining the flashlight around to let every everyone know everywhere where you are. Yeah. Right? The thing that's way, like, you would be, the, the times where you'd be better off turning on the fucking lights. Almost, like, well, yeah. If you could. I don't know. If whatever. Could, whatever. Whatever. Um, you forgive these things to get to the next point. Um... And you just kind of accept that it's like this is movie language, right? Yeah. Um, shout out characters to have to be dumb enough to exist in this story. Problems have to occur, right? Um, let's split up. Why? Because if we stayed together as a unit, nothing bad could go wrong. We could physically overpower the the the, the threat, and the and and there would be nowhere for the story to go. Therefore, let's split up to create weaknesses yeah. and create problems, right? Yeah, it's okay. Why, it's all why, right. one of the things I really like about it is that, like, let's all stick together so we can beat this clown with sticks. Sure. That's, like, a major point in the movie. Yeah. If we're all in the same room yeah. and we all have, like, pipes and shit, yeah. just beat on this fucking thing. Um, 
meanwhile <laughs> fucking nonsense movies that I've uh, you know I'm I'm watching uh, that you've seen over time just have these things go down and you're just like okay you're just you're communicating in movie language right and your brain almost just accepts it in a way even though it, it bothers you yeah um shout out because Steph showed me a, a video recently that was also about how uh characters have moments where like conversationally no one does the thing you know the anime thing where you walk stop your back turned to somebody and you say hey pat i'll always be there and then you keep walking away yeah no one does that right or the thing where it's we were just talking about this on your fucking stream about Leon, talk Leon talking to himself, and it's like I do that, but like not in a fucking situation where there's monsters around. Or the opposite, where you're walking away, and I go, "Hey, Pat." I go, "What?" Don't forget, I Monday. Will. Okay, yeah. And okay. then you know, or whatever, or moments where like I say something, and then I look off into the distance, and I go, "You know." Witty quip, witty quip. Like, no one talks that way. You know what, right? actually, you remind me of? But it's, it's movie a, language. It's a total non sequitur. The, one of the very first things in Pillars 2, uh, you get a dialogue option where you wash up on a beach, and a guy goes, dude, what's going on? And one of the, you can tell him all, like, what's actually going on, and one of them is stare wistfully out at the ocean for a moment before turning to him and go, the gods have charged yeah, me with that's another a good dude. One. That's and it's a good like, one. That's really fuck good off. One. Well, he's taking things too seriously again. No, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to explain a point in an entertaining fashion. Relax. What I'm trying to if say... If your butts weren't so hurt, you'd be more entertained. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that we get used to these things, right? And a lot of the times, if you end up enjoying the, the content at the end, yeah. you completely forget about those moments because you put them in gray life. Yeah. They're gray life damage. That it heals, wasn't a real hit. It, it, it healed back up because yeah. we got to the credits and it was fantastic. And you go, hey, how come they didn't climb out of the thing? You go, ah, don't worry about it. Whatever. The characters were stupid. They were, they were scared. Right? Whatever. No big And deal. it's fine. Yeah. But when, the sh when it ends in catastrophe, yeah. all of that contextual, like, this is dumb, but I'm putting it away to enjoy where it goes shit, all that damage comes rushing back at once. I, I think... The, the bigger problem with me, the way I would phrase it in a story, is like, if you show me that the character is smart enough to realize something that I'm not smart enough to realize, but then show that they're dumb enough to make a mistake that I would never make, yeah. I have a problem. Exactly. And a very good excuse in many cases will be, hey man, just turn your brain off. You know, I don't want to watch shit that turns my brain off. Sometimes, sometimes, I, li I, I have used that phrase, sometimes I understand... I understand. No, turn, like turn your brain off. Don't worry about it. Just sit back and enjoy the ride, right? I literally uh, it get. Depends what we're talking about. Depends on what you're talking we're about. We're seeing fucking Fast and Furious, Hobbs and whatever the fuck. The Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Turn your fucking brain turn off. Your fucking brain off. off all the way. Oh yeah. Leave it at home. Uh, yeah. Don't even bring it. Yeah. Don't put it in your bag. Don't do it. Don't be a Barney brain bringer. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Seems get on your phone. In that. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your rigor way the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, turn it up. <laughs> Susie Seat Kicker, hell yeah, yeah get in. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, Dump this popcorn all over the kids in the front row. Fuck them. Uh, it, it, it really, that, that does happen. But all that great damage that you suspend comes back. And the point I'm bringing up is that Mahler addressed every single one of those tiny things yeah. that I saw and went, no one does that, but anyway. And kept yeah. Like that, that was the end of it? Yeah. And then he brings all of those back and you realize the whole episode is a critical string combo. Yeah. Of undropped botch the whole time. And then they cash it in apparently. <laughs> they cash the damage in. Yeah. At the last second, they really do. You know, they lock out a couple of times like oh, it's like no. something smart's about to happen. Press the wrong button. Lock out. <laughs> Shadow counter! Like, they fucking cash all the damage in. And the things that I wasn't bothered by, because I was like, oh yeah, whatever, TV. Like, it comes back and I go, oh, that really was that dumb, huh? Yeah, I didn't, wow, you know? And it's a funny thing. It, it's funny, because it's, it happens in everything. For even real, the things you enjoy. I, I was talking about it earlier, but like, t look at Revolver Ocelot. Look at where he ends up at the ends of some of those stories. And you go... But the journey was fine. And he goes, listen, he knew the thing that he just revealed to you all the way back then. So if he knew that, why the fuck did he do any of the shit in between the part where he revealed? Whatever. And you don't care because you had fun. 
Yeah. And it was fun all the way, and it ended well. Why'd you get in my way? And all that stupid shit happened? Whatever. Fuck you. It was fun. It's like, why, why did you get in my way, though? Yeah. Why didn't you just let me... Why didn't you just let me complete almost any game ever? <laughs> You know, because we gotta have a boss fight, and I gotta also feel good about the fact that I, I think I'm better than you. I don't know. Wow! Oh, you, they told you about that, huh? Uh, Endings are hard. So yeah, it was it, that that was a fun that was a fun watch that properly uh, I felt I feel like squeezes all the blood out of that stone, um, and it really was also fun to see um, that. The, si the last seven days has been um, a lot of people that, you know, the casual viewing audience. Not casual. What was the term? Passive audience. The passive audience. The passive audience. No, shut up. It's great. What is it? Because like, how you, how, what's a hardcore audience, right? But uh, no, yeah. The, yeah. But, no, media consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, or, 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 I hate going down this road because it seems so up your own ass. Whatever. It be makes you seem your, like you're like. up your own ass. You're, it, like, like that guy in undergrads. It's like, I watched the movie good. Continuity error. Right? No, there, there's two. It makes you feel like you're up your own ass there, there, and you're no, high-browing there's, there's two the broad situation ways in your tower. to enjoy a work, either actively or passively. And they are not better or worse. One is just more involved and the other isn't. Right. If you watch Game of Thrones and you had a great time, fucking good for you. I wish I could do that sometime. Yeah. So you get all and these... it doesn't make you dumb. So it you... just makes your priorities different. Watch a couple videos of some people watching it in a bar. Yeah. And then when the when moments exciting moments happen, they go, yeah, yeah. and cheer because it's cool. Yay. Good thing. Fun. Yeah. And, um, and, and... I think the reason it makes you sound up your own ass is because you in general, are up your own ass. Fair. It's quite possible. Fair. It's quite comfy up there. It's, you know what? I like to be on a high horse. You like to be up on your own ass. In I... your, up on your own ass. That's what I said. I'll stick to it. I always, I always consider the ground an option, my friend. <laughs> I always consider the ground an option. It's why I'd have you sit there and tell me nonsensical time travel theories and go, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe. But in the back there, you're like, that's fucking stupid. Absolutely. Yeah. But I expect the call out to happen the moment I hit that stop button. Oh, yeah. Like it, like it might yeah, right like now. Yeah, like it totally did. The, the only other, difference yeah. is a couple years ago, I'd be nervous about it. Yeah. And now I don't care. Yeah, just soaking it. Soaking the garbage. So, it's fine. The juice is, is fucking seeping into you. Garbage chat juice? Yeah. Hell yeah. Enjoy it. Yum. Mm. That fucking shot of, of, of Luke just going, give me that fucking milk. Yeah. Mwah. That's me. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? You know, you see fucking... I almost said Luke Skywalker. Fucking Mark Hamill just fucking trolling the fuck out of people on social media. Just being an asshole about Star Wars. Be like, haha, Star Wars is fucking stupid. <laughs> I have not. He described, hey, so, hey, Disney came up to me and told me to fucking stop doing that. And I told them to go fuck themselves. Because what are they going to do? Fire me? <laughs> I'm Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Um, da -da 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 there's the, the fact that uh, six days ago, a lot of folks were uh, basically going, um, no, nah, I liked it. It was good. It's fine. It was action-packed and fun. And uh, you guys are haters and whatnot, right? Um, and in some cases, there was there was bigger defenses and, mu and more more sensical arguments that were mounted to the point where people created a civil war gif yeah. of all the heroes on one side with text attached to them for why it was bad and others attached to say why it was good fighting with each other. And in one week, we got the follow up. Yeah. And it really just brought everybody onto the side of oh no, it's so, actually so over. So the problem with that, right, is because like you're no one's ever going to convince you of the feeling that it's turning to shit, that it's actually not turning to shit. Just turn your brain off. That's never going to happen, mm -hmm. right? No one's ever been convinced to return their brain off or uh, or not think critically about it. The problem is is that most of the people who enjoyed it just fine and call you a hater, you are act actually trying to take their fun away from them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You are trying to ruin it for them. Oh, yeah. I to and I totally understand that because I've had these moments yeah. of, like, things I enjoyed later later on coming back and going like, no, but that doesn't make any sense, though. And I go, oh, fuck. I didn't enjoy that. But I still it, have this. It was a mistake to be happy. But there's ghost happy inside of me. Right? Like, there are two parts. Look at Patrice O'Neill and Face Off. Man. Face Off! Yeah. Oh my god, Face Off is ass! You're right? It's like a fucking three, four minute breakdown. That movie is shit! 
<laughs> he went from loving it to hating you it. You turned me on face off. <laughs> God bless. That fucking hand thing with the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fucking hand thing, dude. Oh my god, it's terrible. Um, really? No, no. It's like you know, I, I have those moments where I just I'm thinking back to like, uh, the there's two, two fucking rad moments in the Last Jedi that I'm like, man, those moments were good. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think a Red Letter Media's break, or, a breakdown or. of one of those moments is the best, where the the movie fails that moment itself, or the coolest thing that has ever happened ever ever happens, and it cuts to a group of characters with extras just chatting in the background like they don't give a shit. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the craziest yeah, thing yeah, 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 that has yeah, ever yeah. happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. do you not care? Easily, easily, and in the same vein, because Star Wars is a great place for this. Um, the fucking the the end of Rogue One, right? Yeah, that's cool. The end of Rogue One, I was fucking in. That's I cool. was so in, and, and Red Letter ruined it. Wait, right? What? No. Oh no. Because they're like. Why would he stop breathing for dramatic surprise? Oh, uh, because who like, does that? The, uh, Anakin's an edge lord. He did it for fun. And I'm like, God, fucking damn it! That moment works cinematically, though. No, it should have. Ah, you know. And I got so he mad. Did, he did it because he thought it'd be so cool. Mad because he was so right. It was so and Anakin's an edge lord. He did it because he thought it'd be cool. I fucking, I literally, I clapped. I clapped when I saw him. <laughs> and then it turns out to be pointless. Oh no! And I'm still like, oh, but it was so fucking like ah, skin of their teeth. Anyway, Ugh. um, yeah. So a uh, big old week of disappointments, mm. and uh, that's that. 